show of hands, how many people in the audience ride a bike weekly? Weekly, at least once a week. Okay, now how many people in the audience own a bicycle? <laughs> okay, you got it. I don't need to give a talk. All right, thanks. So, this is a unique situation that we have in America. About a third of us own a bicycle, yet only about 1% of all trips made in America are by bike. So, we all know the benefits of riding a bike. Um, I'm going to speak to them briefly. They probably deserve their own talk. But just from the health perspective, lowers your risk of cardiovascular disease, uh, lowers the number of sick days you'll take at work. From a space efficiency standpoint, which is City 2.0 important, uh, this is 60 people in cars, on bikes, and on a bus, to give you an idea of volume. Yeah, next time you're in traffic, count how many cars you see. That's how many people are around you. It's actually shockingly small. From an energy efficiency standpoint, it takes 50 to 80 times more energy to travel the same distance in a car as it does on a bike. From a sustainability standpoint, there's obviously no gas tank, and the only CO2 emissions you create are the ones you exhale. And most importantly, it's fun. This might be the most purest expression of joy I think I could find. <laughs> so if this was the only reasons, we'd all be riding our bikes. Well, we're not. And why? There's a number of surveys who've tried to figure it out. Um, here's one that shows some of the most common responses. Car traffic, weather, lack of bike lanes, darkness. Now, what do all these things have in common? Concern for personal safety. Um, and it's funny because, and, and I'm not here to fear monger, bicycling is actually quite safe. Uh, it's only second to flying in a commercial airline, which you might be surprised is the most safe. Um, and obviously, you don't want to ride a motorcycle or scuba dive wherever you need to go. Um, that being said, compared to the rest of the world, it's not so safe in the U.S. to ride a bike. We're five times more likely to have a fatal accident in the U.S. than the Netherlands, for example. And while we make up 1% of all trips, we contribute 2% of all fatalities. So, how can we fix this? Well, the number one thing we can do is infrastructure. And that's something that the government can do. Um, Europe has done a great job of this. We're actually just starting to really make a move on it, and it's pretty exciting. Uh, City Bike, which I'm sure you guys have heard of, uh, was a big bike share program in New York. They also have them in Chicago now, and San Francisco just got them, to name a few, as well as a lot of infrastructure investments. LA is actually one that was um, more publicized. So what's the problem with it? Well, it's, it's a great solution. Uh, it just takes time to do. And in fact, Europe has been doing it since the 70s, so it's been taking a number of decades to get where they're at. Well, how can we speed it along? And this is where I think we can really make a good contribution, and that is the industry side. So let's create a demand for them to create more infrastructure. Let's get over that hump of fear that stops us from riding our bikes. And, and this is something that I personally had some experience in, and really why I'm here. Um, about two years ago, I was riding my bike home from work uh, at night, uh, going through a very dark stretch of road with my dinky little headlight, and uh, maybe you've experienced this last minute, don't even see this pothole coming, nearly knocks me off the front of my bike. And it jump-started me into thinking, man, I need a better headlight. <laughs> but, but more importantly, I didn't want to go and just buy a brighter headlight, which is the standard operation. I felt like a handlebar-mounted headlight was inherently misguided. Um, why is the light so high up if what I'm trying to light up is out in front of my wheel? So I did some research. How did we get to this point? Well, here's a modern headlight. Uh, point source of light, focuses forward, looks remarkably like this, which is probably one of the first headlights. Uh, this was, if you were around in the late 1800s, you used a carbide lamp like this, which was pretty much cutting-edge technology. Now stay with me here. There's a canister at the bottom. It holds little stones of calcium carbide. The little thing up on top is a bulb that holds water. The thumbscrew allows small drips to drip down on the calcium carbide. 
Chemical reaction starts making acetylene gas. That heads up into the lens assembly where it's burned and it's white and it's bright and it's wind resistant and it's rain resistant. Why would you not want this? Well, maybe if you don't want a chamber creating high pressure acetylene gas <laughs> right by your face, <laughs> might be a reason. Um, but so, <laughs> understandably, incandescents came along and so did LEDs. And hey, we have all these great improvements, but we're still going to stick with a small light on our handlebars or on our head tube. Um, now contrast that with cars. Well, what have they done in that same amount of time? So here's Cadillac CTS 2014. What's interesting to see is just the design effort that went into this. It's a wraparound headlight. You can be seen from the side. It has integrated signaling. It has daytime running lights. You can see where you're going, obviously. Um, and from this perspective, bike lights seem kind of silly. I mean, you don't park your car and then take your headlights off, put them in your backpack. You don't want them to get stolen. And you have to go buy headlights after you buy your car. OK. And uh, uh, I forgot to charge my batteries. Looks like I'm driving home in the dark tonight. Uh, this is a great uh, comic by Bikey Face. I recommend it. Um, so. Motivation. So now I said, OK, I'm going to make an improvement here. Um, I'm going to make a better headlight. But I'm going to do it by moving the light where it's needed, make it more efficient. And I saw that as the wheel. Uh, now, obviously, putting a headlight on the wheel is pretty tricky because it's spinning. How do you focus light? Well, I had an idea. What if you could time, what if you distributed lights all the way around the wheel and timed it to face, uh, to turn the lights on only when they were needed facing forward? I like building stuff, so I said, I'll try it. So here it is in all its glory. Uh, this is the first wheel-mounted headlight. Um, now, what does that look like when it's operating? That's probably better. So you can see the projection of the light. Um, it was pretty exciting. So I'm riding around on this prototype, and I'm loving it. And uh, suddenly, I noticed something else. And this is really where the importance comes. Um, this arc of light made me hugely visible. and Visibility is a big deal if you've ever ridden your bike at night. Based on this, I did some more research because I wanted to know how big of a deal is visibility. Well, this is a standard bicycle headlight and taillight setup, projecting light forward so you can see, rear light facing backwards so you can be seen. Well, the NHTSA does surveys on bicycle injuries and finds that the way that they happen, about 70% can be attributed to a lack in side visibility. Suddenly, it doesn't seem like such a smart idea not to be very visible. Um, on top of that, a majority of bicycle fatalities happen between 4 p.m. and 4 a.m., which is nighttime. Couple that now with the survey that says that one in five people said that they don't ride because of darkness, and suddenly you have something that really needs to be innovated on, the bike light. So with this newfound personal discovery, I said I'm going to make a red tail light as well to match. <clears throat> and this is what you get. Let's see. <clears throat> So I think that this is a better approach, but more so, I hope that this inspires uh, more design thinking when it comes to safety products. So I turn this now from just a little project I had. It's now a product. Uh, about 10 months ago, we started selling it. It's called Revo Lights, um, and we've been selling now to the world. So I think the lights are going to come down another level. I can show you in the true darkness. There you go. All right, now get on your bikes and ride. Hope to see you guys out there. Thank you.